Yeah, my, my research group works generally in the area of dispersed nanomaterials. That means we, we try to produce nanomaterials in a scalable way and then put those into, into functional materials that, that benefit people every day. A great example would be 3D printed uh, plastic parts. When I think of my, my big goals, my big dreams for, for my research group, it's, it's, it's mainly this. If you look at academia and say, what are people publishing on, especially on the, on the topic of nano, nanomaterials, there's so many amazing papers, just tons and tons and tons of them. But then you say, well, how is, that, how is all that great stuff making an impact in the, in the consumer world, in an industry? And the answer is, like, there's a real disconnect between the two. It's, it's really stunning. And uh, historically, that has been the realm of the chemical engineers, to take what we know in the lab and figure out how do we scale that up, how do we do it in a cost-effective way, how do, we, how do we work out the engineering problems to take concepts that exist in the lab and make it actually uh, uh, you know, practical and, and apply to the real world. Um, we've done that in a few circumstances already. Um, one of the, the most satisfying parts of my career is this. Th these last few years, uh, my group has shown how you can use carbon nanotubes to uh, solve the problem of poor welds in the traces in 3D printed parts. Um, that's actually one of the biggest problems there was. 3D printed parts are really weak in the build direction and you can use nanotubes to go in there and post heat it and fix those welds and it, may, it means that uh, mechanically printed uh, parts that you need to be mechanically reliable like, like a prosthetic limb. that You can actually do it. You can 3D print it on the spot custom made for hundreds of dollars instead of thousands of dollars. I think the the biggest thing that I try to instill in my students is um, a sense of humility and a sense of ethics. Um, and when I say ethics, I, I don't just mean behaving properly, but even being motivated properly. Um, honestly, a lot of uh, high flyer engineering students, they, they come out of high school and they make really good grades and they, they, they're interested in engineering, but their motivations in many cases are um, so that other people think they're smart, right? Like that the the, the real motivation behind a lot of what they do is, is the applause of other people. And so I really try to instill in the students, like, that is, that is not a good motivation. That's not going get to you, get you through your career. That may not even get you through school. A better motivation would be that it's, that is a, it's a blessing to get to study science and engineering at a place like A&M. It's, um, it's great that we have computers that can solve these mathematical equations. It's great that we have textbooks that can guide us in using the principles of science to design technologies that actually help people's lives. Once they have that appreciation and that excitement for the field, I think they're, they're ready to go. Um, I also, I, I spent a lot of time talking to the students about the great scientists of the past. The fact that we have technology and textbooks and all, these, all this information, it doesn't mean that we are smarter than the people of the past. The only reason we have all that stuff is because we build on a foundation of brilliant men and women who came before us and built up this great foundation. And the more you learn about that, the more you learn about the men and women who came before us, the, mo the more you feel, you feel pride in the field of engineering, but you feel humble in yourself. You know that you're just a, a little ant building on this great foundation, and it's a great opportunity to get to do so. I don't, I don't know if I make it accessible. I, I will tell you the, some of the things I do. In the classroom, I try to emphasize what's called active learning. Um, I mean, I do believe in the traditional lecture format. Professor lectures, students take notes. But um, I think that, that uh, the, the schooling system sometimes trains people to go into, into screensaver mode. Like they just they take notes or they do whatever and they don't really engage. And so to get them out of screensaver mode, I do a lot of things in terms of um, asking questions, having real-time quizzes, using apps where they work together as a team and answer a question. Anything to get them talking to each other or arguing about how something can work. Anything to get out of the, the same old, same old, I go to class, I you know turn off my brain and I take notes. Um, anything to engage people in class really helps a lot. Um, the other thing I try to emphasize is that what really makes an engineering degree valuable, it's not just it's not just doing calculations and actually saying, here is the number. A lot of times, an engineer is having to, to make judgment calls just using back-of-the-envelope calculations or even just you know, uh, uh, in, intuitive kind of answers, where a, an engineer will go out into a chemical plant and they say, oh yeah, the reactor conversion is way down. It must be a problem with pressure drop. And you have to, in the moment, say, like, wait a minute, does that make sense? 
I don't know if that makes sense. You know, those kind of little, does it make sense? If there's a problem with pressure drop, which way does the conversion go? You need to know right, right then. No numbers, just general trends and like how, physically what's going on. Um, sometimes I've seen engineering students who have, uh, they, they have an attitude of, of, of what's been called plug and chug. I get an equation from the textbook, I get some numbers, I plug those numbers in, I punch the calculator, I spit an answer out. Like I really don't think that's helpful because you have no physical understanding or no physical intuition of what the molecules are actually doing. And that physical intuition of what the molecules are actually doing is what makes a degree like chemical engineering valuable. I talk to a lot of high schoolers, um, usually, you know, high flyer high schoolers who are considering coming to AM. And I think the biggest adjustment that most of them have to deal with is, um, is thinking about their resume. A lot of, a lot of people, they, they think, ooh, I'll do this and that'll look good on my resume. Ooh, I'll do that, it'll look good on my resume. There's lots of stuff you can do that look, looks good on your resume. It leads to this kind of weird life where you're doing lots of things that you don't really care about, but you fake caring about it to look good on your resume. Like that, I don't know, it's just not a good way to go through life. There's lots of different opportunities you can do, but the best opportunities are the ones you would do even if you couldn't put it on your resume. That's a really good test of whether it's worthwhile to get involved in an activity or to, to, to devote yourself to, some, to, to, to whatever it is. If, even if you didn't get to tell anyone, the skill set that you gain from that activity, the experience, um, the great memories that you would get from being involved in a student organization or involved in an athletics team or whatever it is, imagine it couldn't go on your resume, would you still do it? And if the answer is yes, then it's probably worthwhile. And if the answer is no, then, I mean, you're just kind of in mercenary mode, beefing up your resume by doing things you don't actually care about. I, I deal with uh, Texas A&M alumni a lot. I try to you know, interact with industry and make my research relevant to industry. And um, I think it's, it's really um, amazing how much the alumni, how much affection they have for the university and for current students. The idea that the alumni would walk in and see a current student and say, hi, I have, I've never met you before, but we're fellow Aggies and that means we're on the same team and I have, you know, every, every, I want to take every opportunity to help you. I think that's my favorite thing.